Hello and welcome to my keto kitchen. I'm Victoria. Today I have a very simple video. However, it's actually making some really big waves in my baking. So I had told you guys before that I love half allulose and half erythritol in my baking blends. So when I would make something sweet, I would take half of allulose and I use the Splenda brand, and I would take half erythritol, which I would use the Lakanto brand, and I would do half and half. The problem that I kept getting with that is you guys know I love allulose. And allulose is wonderful when you're doing anything liquid-wise, but when you are baking and if you use allulose, especially if you use all allulose, it will brown so fast. I have burned so many things and I've gone through so many different recipes in my kitchen. I've used allulose. The final product burnt. It didn't taste that great. I discarded it, moved on to a different recipe, was altering flowers, which all things have worked together for good. And yes, I continue to better and better and better my recipes. However, I think many times those recipes were perfect. However, it was the allulose that kept messing up the different recipes because they kept burning or they kept turning brown or they would caramelize too quickly. So. By now, I think you guys know me, and I've said it probably more than anything else on my channel, is that I don't stop until we get to something that is exactly, exactly the same as either white flour or white sugar. I keep going, just going to keep researching, keep learning, plus there's always something new. Well, here's something I've never brought to my channel. And this is something I have began to love, not by itself, in a actual baking blend. I had put out a comment and I said that I really, really love Truvia and everything that I drink. This is, this is what I go to for my coffee in the morning, for my sweet tea, Truvia, the granular Truvia. I buy it and I'll link it in the description box below. I buy this in bulk. I just take this to the container. I fill this thing up. I have a lot of Canadian viewers and you might would know this. Boca sweet. So Boca, it's a Japanese pumpkin. It's more of an extract, kind of like Stevia is. However, if you look at the ingredients, you're going to see that xylitol is the carrier of the Boca sweet. So when we use Truvia, it's erythritol that carries the Stevia, gives you the bulk. So, xylitol is similar to allulose in the fact that it will soften your foods. Allulose will really, allulose will make a cookie taste like cake. The recipe can be spot on with the flour, but if it's cakey, you're going to need to add some erythritol because erythritol is just the opposite. If you use all erythritol, you are going to get a hard, dry, finished product. I, and it's grain, it can be grainy. I do not like all erythritol in nothing. However, I was really thinking, studying the science behind the different properties of the sweeteners. Now erythritol will dry things out. Xylitol will make things soft. Allulose will make things super moist. However, allulose browns too fast. I just, at this point, I'm not using any allulose in anything that I bake with because it browns too fast. However, if you want my opinion on what is the healthiest and the best keto sweetener, allulose. There is no comparison. Health-wise, when you're on keto, allulose, that's the top. So I still like to use allulose in things I drink. However, Truvia still tastes better. Anyways, there's so many issues. Am I the only one that thinks there's an issue with every single thing when you're doing keto? There's like no one thing that is exactly a swap for a non-keto ingredient. So, all of that, I'm gonna get so much grief for talking for so long, but I'm sorry. If for those of you that want to learn keto and learn why I do the things that I do, I think you'll appreciate the talking aspect. And no, if my hands were tied behind my back, I could not speak. No, probably not gonna happen. If you hear a little bit of pecking, we have seven chickens and they are down the hall in a container because they're too little to be outside and it's kind of cold. 
and I'm sorry. I can't put them outside because I don't want them to freeze to death. So here's the deal. Half and half. You use half Truvia and half Boca Sweet. Now, when you mix 50% Truvia with 50% Boca Sweet equally and you use it in any recipe, you can get a normal cookie. So not a cakey cookie, but not a dry crumbly cookie either. When you make cake, you get a moist product that is not dry, but it's also not gritty. There is something special when you mix half Truvia and half Boca Sweet. Even though Truvia is not cup for cup, it's sweeter than sugar. For some reason, in my opinion, when you mix half Truvia with half Boca Sweet, it is just as sweet, just as good as sugar. I wanted to tell you guys this because this is a mixture I've never done. Also, I am getting anything that I make with these two, it is turning out just like I am looking forward to. It's turning out just like I am expecting it to. So a cookie, when I picked up the cookie off the rack after it cooled, it did not fall, it did not bend. But when I bit into it the next day and erythritol would be gritty and strange, it was not. It was not too dry. It was soft, it was moist, but it cr it crunched, just like a cookie. Just like if you made a cookie with regular sugar, it's gonna be soft the first day or until it cools, and as it sits on the counter, it's gonna get a little more stiff. And the next day, the inside is moist, but you get that, that bite and that slight crunch when you bite into it. That is exactly what happened when I made chocolate chip cookies with my Perfecto Keto Flour 2.0 and I used half Boca Sweet, half Truvia. Once I bit into it the first day, even after it cooled, I was able to pick it up. It did not fall apart, it didn't break, and it wasn't cakey. The next day, I was able to pick it up, get that crunch in my bite, but the inside was moist. It was not gritty. Something special is happening between the mixture of these two in half and half. I am back on keto and I usually keep my carbs below 30, but at this point until November, I've got to keep my carbs below 20 to get back on track. But I wanted to let you guys know that this is the best keto sweetener mixture baking blend that I've ever used. It's turning out to look like a sh white sugar product. It's not recrystallizing the next day. It's not falling apart because it is, turns into a cake substance. It is acting just like white sugar. So I will link both of these ingredients in the description box below under Amazon links. If you wanna try this out, it is half and half, it's one to one. So if your recipe calls for one cup of white sugar, half a cup of this and half a cup of that, uh, I'm actually mixing, when I get these in, I actually take a cup of Truvia and a cup of Boca Sweet and I keep going until I fill up a, I have a separate container for the mixture of these two. So I am still experimenting, I'm still here even though I don't have power, I have chickens over here, we've got birds over there, we got cats over there. Um, I feel like I'm surrounded by animals right now. However, we did get our septic put in. We do have water. We are supposed to be getting our floors put in in two days and then having this countertop situation fixed and the backsplash hopefully next week. So it's possible that my next video will be a final product. Lord willing, that would be so great. It's also possible that it's not gonna happen. But until then, I'm bringing you all the things that I am experimenting with and I want you guys to know that this right here is the best keto mixture I've ever used. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe and you have a blessed day.